Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and this is a short episode of Junk in the Trunk, and a bit of a merch announcement as well, because for the first time ever since the NEC, we've now got actual physical merch t-shirts and stickers and mugs and things that I can sell to you direct instead of through Redbubble. There is still stuff on Redbubble because there's just too much stuff to make at the moment, but let's go through what we've got first of all, then we'll open the packages. Now, believe it or not, creating merchandise stuff to sell on a YouTube channel is horrifically expensive and takes a lot of time and effort to decide what to do. So I've just pinned down three things, which is all off the back of the NEC in terms of t-shirts. First of all, the channel slogan, broken rovers and shattered dreams. It's what the words we live by. There's a broken rover immediately behind the camera right now, and I'm hoping the postman will turn up with a gasket for it any minute now. Secondly, because at the NEC we had Vaford the big Volvo 740 on the stand, we got Volvo t-shirts as well. This is in a nice paler colour rather than the black one, it's a bit of a change as well. And of course, in a change from going for the pure black, we've gone for a bit of a, a graphite grey with the Furious Driving logo. Full colour, screen printed, amazingly nice quality, decent quality. I've worn mine about three times each so far, washed them a couple of times, and they've all come up looking fantastic. These are in sizes from small to 2XL, so small, medium, large, extra large, and 2XL. All good. These are £15 each, plus P&P. Then we have the hats. The hats are back in stock after last winter. This is the first thing I did ever. As a merchandise team, we've got the grey ones with the Furious Driving logo. We've got the blue ones the Furious Driving logo. We've got the yellow ones, and of course the black ones, which are great for working under a car because you don't see the dirt. These ones are a smoother knit. These are like a heavy, chunky knit, antique style. Again, £15 each plus p and I'll give you an address to go to in a minute. Mugs, we have got mugs. You can still get these and other ones on Redbubble if you're abroad, but if here in the UK we have the Furious Driving Mugs, £12 plus postage and packaging. We have a limited supply of stickers. We have the Volvo on a transparent background or a plain white background. We've got the Furious Driving Classic Furious Driving sticker. We've got our Alpha 145 on a transparent background. Got Furious Driving on a transparent background, and we've got the Rover Tomcat on a white background. Those are £2.50. I am putting a website together. Turns out that's quite difficult and I'm not sure what I'm doing. So for the moment, if you just send me an email, paypal shop at furiousdriving.co.uk, and I'll put a thing in the description below, giving all the prices and things and the costs of post and packing for all this stuff within the UK. Yeah. And then hopefully in a week or so's time, we'll have an actual website that works properly and has got like drop downs and ordering and stuff like that, which will make things very clever indeed. And get more stuff in the future, key rings, badges, more stickers, different t-shirts, all kinds of other stuff, which will be very exciting and fun, won't it? But I've got to sell the stuff first of all in order to pay for the new stuff. So come, go and buy a t-shirt. <laughs> now onto junk in the trunk. Right, so we have decamped to a different trunk to look at the junk because there was some building work happening next door and suddenly it got rather loud, so it had to be somewhere else. So we've gone off in the Mercedes to look at the few things we've got in our post bag this time. This was previously a monthly feature, um, but that was very much dependent on the amount of stuff that turns up. And because of not quite so much stuff had arrived this last few weeks, we've had to delay it until we've got enough to make a little feature out of it. So thanks to everyone who sent stuff in and apologies if you've sent stuff in and it's been sitting in the boot of the 200VI waiting for this day. If you've got stuff you would like to send out to us at uh, Furious Driving, then the address to send it to, let's find a nice clear one. Here we go. Junk in the trunk, Furious Driving, PO Box 477 Aylesford ME6 9LE, Lima Echo, that's in the United Kingdom. And so let's begin we're at the beginning. Now, first of all, this didn't come in via the PO box. This was handed to me in person at the NEC. This came from a guy called Gentil, who is a Portuguese gentleman who is a friend of the channel because he lent us a car about two years ago, 18 months back maybe. The 203 Estate Mercedes C-Class, which we drove, belonged to him. And he came along and said hello to me at the NEC, which is great to see everyone else, in fact, who said hello at the NEC. Thank you for coming along. It was great to see you all. But Gentil brought along this number plate, which is the Portuguese style number plate from 1937 until 1991. This actual plate came from his dad's very own Rover 414 in June 1991, making it one of the absolute very, very last ones to go onto a car. In fact, it barely looks like it's been used. It looks virtually new. 
And this is a bit like the old British mid-century, mid-20th century um, style of plates with the black non-reflective background with the white raised letters. These are all plastic though, I imagine they would have been metal back in the, uh, the 30s and 40s, but these are a metal num sorry, a plastic non-reflected number plate. They're replaced by a reflective plate at the end of 1991. You can actually see how the letters are riveted on, so you can't change it without damaging it, destroying it basically. It's a very interesting piece. Now you may or may not know, I am trying to collect a number plate from every country in the world and stick up on the wall in the garage and with countries like Australia and America, go for every state as well. I've managed to get one run down the wall in the garage but because there's a dead rover in the way, I've not been able to get the next ones which have come up in the last couple of junks in the junks onto uh, the batons and onto the wall as well. Maybe if this mythical hoped for uh, promised land of the uh, furious driving uh, car barn ever appears, maybe we'll move them all over there instead because then we'll hopefully have a bit more space to spread them out and try and get a plate from every country. So thank you very much indeed, Gentil. That is fantastic to have that. Not one I had before in the collection and really unusual as well. So a really cool addition to the collection. Now next up we have got another number plate. This one has come from yet another friend of the channel, Darren. Darren Walker is uh, aka Free Pie and Chips Garage on YouTube, um, where he is a British uh, national, civ not civilian, a British person who now lives over in Ohio and collects European oddities as far as they are in America. And some of his cars are actually pretty rare for Europe, never mind over in the States. So he's done very well at collecting a barn full of really fascinating cars. So if you check out his channel, it's great. He's also a contributor to Classic Retro Monthly, as am I. So yeah, we've got more, more links, but he knows that I absolutely love these number plates and he knows I love Ford Crown Victorias. He's a lucky boy because he used to have a black and white Ford CVPI. And this was the Ohio plate, because that's where he lives, that was on that car. So this is not only an American license plate, it's an American Ford Grand Victoria license plate, making it a very special addition to the collection. So I'm rather excited to have this. You'll notice that the bag it comes in even says Ohio. Then you get the plate itself, which says Ohio as well, a little picture of the, the state. They always have a little logo, a monogram kind of thing saying about that state. This one is the birthplace of aviation, which I'll be honest, I didn't know that, or it never really occurred to me to think that Ohio was where the Wright brothers were based. So that's a really cool little addition to my American plates just there. As you may well know, I've got a short list of cars I absolutely want more than, more than anything, more than a cup of tea, which is how much I want them. And on that list is a Cord, an Austin 7, a Crown Vic, and a couple of other things, but those are like my top three want must have want cars and to have a plate that's been on a crown vic is a bit of a treat so thanks darren that's really very cool indeed have you ever noticed if you look at the word ohio upside down it's really hard to work out whether it's upside down or not oi ho no ohio ah yeah now next up we have got so i did open this previously because i started filming it a minute ago and then the uh the builder's work started next door and it got too noisy to carry on recording. So here we have another one dressed to Furious Driving PO Box 477 Aylesford ME69 Ellie. Here we have, ooh, stickers, many stickers indeed. This is from Prime Vinyl, who I think I actually follow on Twitter. They're a new business run by a couple of petrol heads, Chloe and Alan. We hope you like your very own vinyl decal and personalised social media package. Okay, so lots of stuff here with uh, Furious Driving uh, YouTube symbols, FD tweets, which is my Furious Driving Twitter name, and I think there's an Instagram one as well. You know, oh, bigger, bigger Furious Driving FD, oh, FD tweets. Yep, again. Uh, I did see one, yeah, I thought I saw it as it fell out of the bag. Instagram Furious Driving, so thank you much indeed. Um, huge fans of the channel. Chloe's really excited to see the progress with the 200 VI, having owned two Rover R3s in the past. And these guys have got three of their own project cars, a 106 Rally, an E30 BMW 320i, which I used to have one of those as well, I really regret selling it, and a Phase 2 Saxo VTS, all in states of disrepair, which is normal for this channel, broken rovers and all that. So their art is all designed at home and cut at home, running on an Etsy shop, specialising in all things vinyl, not records, um, and drawing on inspiration and added to stuff from the 80s and the 90s. They've got Cavaliers, Escorts, 205s, E30s, 106 and 206, and of course, what we have here, 
Volvo 740. So this needs to find some homes around the garage. Uh, maybe a toolbox or something needs to be decorated. Maybe some bits of, bits of stuff, camera bags and so forth, will have some decals attached. I wonder if they do other colours. I need to go on their Etsy shop and have a look. So I've got my black Pelican cases. Uh, could look quite cool with some uh, silver or white logos. We'll investigate that in due course. Now next up, this one, I recognise the stamp is from all the way in Australia. And I recognise the handwriting as well from a previous contributor. Uh, if you're interested, this is a like a pretty franked envelope with a picture by Jimmy Pike called Pernini Country in 1988 that was printed or painted. And it's like a detail from a much bigger artwork. If you're into what's the word for stamp stuff. Someone quote that down below. Right, so let's hope, have a look at what we've got here. Holden. Holden is the uh, Australian arm of GM, which has just recently been uh, shut down, which is a crying shame because it was a true Australian company. It was you know, Australian through and through, and then GM bought them, and typical GM, like Saab, so many other companies, they just n not understood what to do with them, so they wound up shutting them down. So let's have a quick look at the letter. Who this is from. This is from Tim Cox. Tim has definitely sent stuff to me before. Previous junks in the trunks. And so thank you for making the effort to send it all the way here from the other side of the world. I'll enclose some old sales information from the disappearing Holden brand as I've heard General Motors are getting out of the right-hand drive market, which is possibly true because, okay, they've got rid of Holden in Australia. They've also uh, just sold off Vauxhall Opel here in Europe and the UK um, to Peugeot. So yeah, maybe they are. It was Indonesia and Japan, I suppose the only other places, well, right-hand drive significantly. Um, when I saw you'd received a German number plate, I thought you might find it interesting that in South Australia and some other states, it's possible to have a European style number plate assigned to your car, referring to the little brochure I have in my hand here. And I always click the like button. Thank you much indeed. Much appreciated. So first of all, have a little look at this brochure. What does your car say about you? So you can have, oh my goodness, a German or Austrian style number plate assigned legally to your car in Australia. That is incredible. I'm really quite surprised at that. Oh wow, or you can have black and silver like an old UK plate, so we can have different colours like different American states. Wow. Yeah, pink plates, cutie, no man, I just know. Wow, I didn't know that was an option over in Australia. You guys have so much freedom over there. You can do pretty much what you want. Amazing. Well, let's have a look at this. Well, nothing quite like a Holden, it says. Oops. And inside, it is, wow. It's not a brochure as I thought it was gonna be. It's lots of individual um, sheets, like uh, information sheets, like a glossy picture one side, and information on the back, starting with the Jackaroo V6, which is possibly the best name for any vehicle I've ever heard, the Jackaroo. Isn't that a mythical half kangaroo, half something else? which is basically an Isuzu Trooper with a Holden badge on the back of it. So that's interesting with a, uh, a V6 motor in it. Best name of any car ever possibly, apart from um, the mighty utility wizard. There's a lot in here, it's gonna take a minute or two to go through all this. The Frontier Sport 4x4, which is actually a car we had over here as a Vauxhall um, and of course the Opel Frontier. Quite a small engine for the uh, Australian market, but these were properly solid basic off-roaders. They got a bit of stick at the time for being too, you know, too crude, but they were just basically good off-roaders. On the other side though, is the Holden Rodeo, which I think is again, another Isuzu. So great artwork, great photos. I'm guessing this is from around the early noughties. And the great, well, the thing with GM, which is another great thing, the thing with GM is that they could just pick and choose from the global range. So this is the Corsa van, which is here called a Holden Combo. It's a tiny little van, popular over in, well, all around the world it would appear. Gosh, the Holden card, so you can buy, or sorry, the GM card from Holden, so you can buy your new Holden, on your Holden card. I will tweet all of these later because this is fascinating stuff to skim through. Got a couple of big saloons here, which I'm guessing must be from the American side of things. The Statesman Series 2 and the Caprice Series 2, both by Holden, obviously, but they don't look much like, well, maybe a bit like a Caprice, but a different tail end. The front end looks a bit like a, a US Caprice. 
if you could let me know what's inside the engine of these things, they're both uh, V6 powered, I think. Oh, so the uh, the Caprice is V8 and the Statesman is V6. So yeah, an interesting pair of cars. I love the hubcaps on this thing. I don't know if it's all alloys or hubcaps, but either way, those are quite magnificent wheels. Haha, <laughs> here's something I do recognise. In fact, both of these I recognise. The Calibra, a European sports coupe, and the Holden Barina. It's hard not to say that with an Australian accent. It is, of course, a Vauxhall Corsa. A little basic car which has been mocked for doing handbrake turns outside McDonald's ever since it was introduced. But literally nothing has changed. The same colours, the same hubcaps, same alloy wheels. Everything is basically just a Corsa straight from the Vauxhall line. Or Opal line, depending on where they build them, I suppose. Now here's another one which is not a car I recognise the basis of, the Holden Apollo. I don't know if this is pure Australia or possibly an Isuzu they've rebadged. There was a wagon version available, so it's a very practical family car. It looks a bit like a, I don't know, like a Toyota Camry or something. Well, that's certainly a competitor to that. And um, another one I do recognise again, the Astra. They didn't even bother changing the name on the Holden Astra. The four-cylinder Holden Astra is the epitome of hassle-free driving. I guess, yeah, you can't argue with that. Again, pretty much nothing changed from the European cars. We've got the sporty GSI, we've got the basic cooking models. They've even got the four-door four door booted saloon version. We called that the Belmont over here. I don't know what they called it over there. And four, I'm going to say finally, there's one or two more things in here. The Holden Calais, which again, not a UK car. We never got this one over there in any guise, even with a different name, the Calais Series 2. Oh, and that's just information about Holden Network. And finally, the most Australian vehicle you're ever going to come across, the Holden Ute. Another one that's hard not to say with an Australian accent, no matter how hard you try not to. And it comes with a V6 engine, of course. That basically looks like a Monaro without all the fancy stuff and just a little engine. It's that little, it's about three and a half litres, 3.8 or 3.6. Oh, the, the S Ute has the option of a 5 litre V8. The only V8 available in an Australian built Ute. So, yeah, that is basically where we get the. This, uh, Monaro? Now, wait a minute, I'll get my ridiculously big engined Holdens mixed up. I think actually it was just called the SS, wasn't it? The Monaro was the car based one. They're not a car we commonly see over here, but when you do, everyone turns to look. Right, let's see what else we've got. This is. Robson Rover Repair. Hi mate, love the channel and the content. With the arrival of the 200 VI and the 216 Cabby Resto, I wanted to send you a few things to enjoy. Keep the videos going. I adore the 200 VI. VI, yeah, me too, I can't wait to get that. In fact, just as I was leaving to come and film this, a box turned up which has got a head gasket in it. So we can get on with that very shortly indeed. Ooh, Robson Rover Repair air fresheners. Sandalwood, daddy number one. <laughs> air freshener causing deforestation tax. VVC, very, very coconut. I like what you did there. CVT, continuous vanilla taste. Oh, a new car smell and an MG Rover. At least you have a sense of humour. <laughs> Imagine what it was like owning the car when it was brand new off the forecourt and didn't smell like KFC fag butts and that pollen filter you meant to change four years ago. So, thank you, Colin. That is hilarious. I'll make sure I find a home for these in one of the Rovers. Oh, some stickers as well. Oh, we, like, we like a sticker. We'll find a home for a sticker somewhere. Maybe when the uh, big new mythical unit finally arrives, we can hang, we can stick stickers all over stuff. Or a sticker wall maybe, or something like that. We have more, we have more stuff. This one, I need a knife. I didn't bring a knife with me. Normally I've got a pocket knife or something with me, but I left in a hurry. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a spanner. I have a tool, it's the wrong kind of tool, but it's inside the envelope. It's like one of those packs of scissors, a blister pack. You need scissors to open the blister pack of scissors. So this is, ah, this is a useful 12 and 13 millimeter sizes, which is most of the bolts on a Rover, to be honest. Uh, Rolson brand, it's a ratcheting spanner, but not only is it a ratcheting spanner, it's kind of a, a ratcheted shaped, a bent shaped, so you can get onto awkward shapes. That's really handy, thank you much indeed. Ah, oh, it's like a reversing thingy on there as well, so you can change direction when you're 
on the tool. That's really good because the ones you have to turn over, a bit of a faff if you get them stuck and you can't get back past to have a click. It's really cool. So, so dear furious driving, a working tool for post bag. Uh, I was going to say thank you, but I've got a f oh Tony. Hello, t thank you very much indeed, Tony. That's brilliant. Uh, your YouTube channel is called Move Sky, I think. Um, now, what was I going to say? You're interested in the induction heater tool? Yeah, that is the most amazing tool I've ever used. I actually took it around and helped my next door neighbour with their car with it the other day. They couldn't believe it either. It's called an induction heater tool. It would Draper make it and it's fantastic. If you follow the link in the description below to all the tools I've listed onto Amazon, you can find a link to it there. It's not cheap, but it is the most amazing tool you will ever come across. This is a close second. <laughs> So thank you much indeed for that. I really do appreciate that. Lastly, but not leastly, we have a box, which as I just said, I didn't bring a knife down with me, which is a mistake. Now I can't get into it. Ah, there we go. Battling the Amazon cardboard. Aha, now this is something uh, someone did say they were gonna send out to me. Um, these are the side panels or side trim panels for the uh, center console of a Mini Cooper, an R50, because mine are a little bit scratched up, and this is from a car that's been broken, and um, and so that one is definitely a lot better. That one's got a couple of scratches, but I think it looks better as well, so significant upgrades to um, improve, well, I've lost the screws over now, <laughs> to improve the look of my little Mini, which is such a great little car. I know you emailed me and I'm sat out here without my emails and things and my mind's gone blank and I can't think who to thank for that. <laughs> I've only just noticed it's been sat in the back of the car for a couple of weeks. That's addressed to M Cooper, care of Matt Richardson Furious Driving, Mini Cooper. I like what you did there, I've only just noticed that. How did I not even see that for so long? Thank you so much, those do look like a nice improvement. I've actually had to take the uh, actual ones back out of the Mini again the other day because having fitted everything and got the radio working, I disconnected the battery to save the power in it and then went to go and reinsert the code number because it wanted the number again having been reconnected and I fluffed it and now it's locked itself again so I need to send the radio back to the decoding people to re-decode it again which is actually quite annoying. So the radio is currently out and these are currently off so there you go. So thank you everyone who sent these fascinating and fun items through for junk in the trunk. This is always an adventure in the mailbag, seeing what stuff has turned up from around the world. Uh, thank you so much for getting stuff all the way from Australia to me, and thanks for getting stuff from America and Portugal. It has been a global endeavor this week, so thanks everyone for doing that. If you've got stuff to send in, as I said before, please do send it into Junk in the Trunk, Furious Driving, PO Box 477, Aylesford, ME69LE. If you would like to grab yourself a t-shirt, a mug, a sticker, or a hat, then follow the links in the description below, PayPal shop at furiousdriving.co.uk uh, with the correct amount of money for the item, plus postage, which is generally one or two pounds, depending on what it is we're shipping and hopefully we'll have a website to be selling this stuff properly from in a few days time. Well, a couple of weeks, you know, I don't work that fast, you know that. So thanks for watching. Send stuff in for the next one if you got it and join me again next time when hopefully, if it doesn't snow tonight, we can crack on with a bit of welding on that old blue Mercedes. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.